Hey guys, I hope that you had a great Thanksgiving and some of you are probably doing some Black Friday shopping right now, but we want to go and continue the top 22 things that Astros fans should be thankful for from the 2022 season. We're going to go and continue with 11 through 1 right now. So thank you for tuning in to the Locked on Astros podcast that starts now. Hello and welcome to Locked On Astros, your daily Astros podcast. Here are your hosts, Eric the Man Heisman and Brett H-Town Wheelhouse Chansey. We are Locked On Houston Astros, and we hope that you join us for a daily Locked On Astros podcast. My name is Eric Heisman. You can find me on Twitter at Eric Talk Astros. Find the show at Locked On Astros, your team every day. Uh, Brett took the day off to spend some time with the family, but um, we're going to go ahead and do a little quick uh, version of this. We just wanted to continue because um, the Astros won the World Series. There's a lot to be thankful for in 2022. So let's go and discuss it. And this episode is brought to you by Bet Online. Bet Online has you covered this season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. Bet Online, it's where the game starts. And we are very thankful for all the fans, all the listeners, all the people that found us on YouTube or on uh, Spotify, Odyssey, wherever you listen to your podcast. Thank you for making Locked On Astros podcast your first listen every day. And go and continue to do so. Tell a friend over Thanksgiving dinner. Or hopefully you told a friend over Thanksgiving dinner. Or well, if you're out Black Friday shopping, go ahead and just say, hey, have you checked out the Locked on Astros podcast? Go ahead and check them out. So we're going to go and continue the top 22 things that we were thankful for from the uh, 2022 se- season. There's a lot that we could not fit on there. And I want to go ahead and say one of the most notable um exceptions from this and that would be the fact that we got to experience another world series parade so that would have been number 23 uh so so to speak so i just think that having a world series parade it's the way the fans can really show the players how what they mean to the city and it's just something that yeah at the ball game you can clap them but not everybody can afford to go to those world series games but this is where everybody the whole city can go out there and say, look, this is uh, y- we're really proud of what you did. So congratulations. So um, now go. let's go ahead and go on to number 11. So number 11, this is something that a lot of people are like, oh, well, this guy's not any good. He didn't have a good season last year with the Phillies. So why are you signing him? Well, Hector Neris came in and he did really great in the postseason. In the postseason, he had 13.5 strikeouts per nine inning. Yes, he allowed one home run in six innings. He had three holds. Two of them were victories. And during the regular season, he was just as dominant. He had 13 point, uh, sorry, he had uh, 13.1 strikeouts. No, sorry, 10.9 strikeouts per nine innings pitched in 65 innings. He had six and four record. He did get three saves. 25 holds. So this guy was part of the Astros uh, dynamic bullpen. He was the reason why Dusty Baker was uh, felt comfortable removing some of his starters early in game. And this is one of James Click's best signings. And I uh, we're going to see this in the 2023 season as well. So Hector Neris is number 11. I think that number 10 is kind of obvious. And it's I don't know if it's really something be thankful for. I don't know if it really motivated the players, but it sure motivated the fans. We really fed off that. Oh, Yankees, you really want the Astros? You really, really want the Astros? Do you know the history between us? And uh, But the Yankees fans were chatting, we want Houston. We want Houston. And so what did the Astros go in there and do? They swept the Yankees and they took care of business. They dominated the Yankees. And you would think that the Phillies saw that. Well, Uh, The Yankees were chanting, we want Houston, and they got swept. Should we do the same thing? Yeah, let's go ahead and do it. And so then Phillies fans were chanting, we want Houston, we want Houston. Yeah, that series was more of a challenge for the Astros. But overall, it was still a good series, and the Astros ended up winning that. So um, it was, um, I think the we want Houston chants were maybe 
billboard material, like they would say, oh, you really wanted us? You really, really wanted us? So I know it wasn't the players that were saying it, but it was the fans. And at the end of the season, I know everybody's coming up the shirts that said, oh, you still won Houston? Are you good? You still won Houston? You, um, are you sure you won in Houston in the first place? And all the shirts that said, Houston, you have a problem. So that's just opposing fan bases being uh, just having confidence in our in their team. And, you know, we probably did the same thing. So uh, props to the Astros for rising. Um, what was the uh, CS rise? So rising ac- across over the, um, the scene, them rise, the Mariners, and then taking care of the hated Yankees and then beating the Phillies who the, uh, were on a magical run. And the Phillies did put up a fight, but at the end of the day, the Astros were just the better team. And so um, that was number nine. Sorry, number 10. Number nine. I think number nine is something that uh, a lot of people have been kind of uh, talking about for the past couple of years. What's wrong with Alex Bregman? Is uh, is he hurt? Is he ever going to be the same guy where he almost was MVP a few years ago? What's going on with him? But he rebounded this year, and he he even got some votes for MVP. Yeah, what, he didn't finish in the top uh, three or anything, but I believe he, if I remember correctly, he finished in top ten. But over for the season, he batted two fifty nine with the eight twenty OPS. He had twenty three home runs, ninety three RBIs. Uh, he just if he just got seven more, he would have got to a hundred. He had a four point five WAR overall. But this was a much better season from Alex Bregman, and it was good to see his bat get going. His defense was always there. That was never a question. It was just, was all the scandal talk affecting Alex Bregman? And this was the season where he said, no, I'm good. I'm good. We saw some of the cockiness come back, and that was good from Alex Bregman. So it was good to see Alex Bregman kind of come back to who he was, and even in postseason, I mean, I remember in the past we've heard, oh, Alex Bregman sucks in the postseason and he's never been good. But this year he batted 294 with three home runs, 11 RBIs. He had 29 total bases and he only struck out six times, six times in 51 at bats. So that's what Alex Bregman brings to the team. He doesn't strike out a lot. His OPS was also 948 in the postseason, which was the second lowest behind Jeremy Pena. So uh, it was good to see Alec Bregman come back uh, hit, to his cockiness, to his dominance, to just being a force in the Astros lineup because with the offensive struggles they had this year, they really needed him. Uh, so let's go on to the next one. This is something that we've been all pushing for for years. Christian Javier was a good reliever. Yes. But would he make it a better starter? And the que- the answer is yes, he would make a better starter. And we saw that. He was part of two no-hitters this year. Part of two no-hitters this year. And one of them was in the World Series. Just think about that. He was, uh, he was part of – there's only been two um, no-hitters in World Series history. He was part of one. Yes, it wasn't a complete game, no-hitter. And a lot of people are saying, well, that doesn't count. That doesn't count. Yes, it does. But number eight is making Christian Javier a full-time starter. This was the first season that the Astros actually did that, and Christian Javier in the playoffs responded. In 12 and two-thirds innings pitch, he had 16 strikeouts. He had two wins. He had a 0.71 ERA, and he had one quality start. But during the regular season is where he kind of shined. He had a 2.37 ERA. He had nine point. Sorry, I'm looking at the wrong. He had 2.54 ERA. He had 11.7 strikeouts per nine innings pitch, 194 strikeouts, and 148.2 innings pitch. And uh, overall, he had 11 and nine record. The Astros just didn't score a lot of runs when he pitched, so that was a re- reason why he only had that. But it was a good um, a bet to, when he's on the mound. He's going to pitch a good game. And so that's why it was just kind of good to see him get out there and do that. So next, we're going to kind of look at um, somebody had a bad regular season, but they really stepped it up in the playoffs. And somebody came back from a major surgery and really helped the Astros win the World Series. So we'll talk about that as well. But before we do, let's talk about Bet Online. Bet Online is your number one source for all sports betting info, stats, news, and analysis. 
Get the latest odds and trends for every professional and amateur league out there. From football to basketball to soccer and esports, we got it all at betonline.net. I know some of y'all are already out there making bets on the Astros winning in 2023 already. And I know uh, Brett's um, already thinking about doing that as well. And the best place to get all the odds is bet online. Get, um, and if you love sports podcasts, you can find all those at bet online as well. We're the fastest and easiest way to get your betting fix. Head to the betting website today or use your mobile device to learn more. Bet online. It's where the game starts. And I know that um, a lot of people probably bet on, I know Mattress Max is one of those people that bet on the Astros winning the World Series, but a lot of people are doing that as well. And uh, it's just good to see that people are getting excited about that. And uh, thank you for making Locked on Astros podcast your first listen today. Make your second listen today, uh, the Locked on Sports Today podcast. From games that matter uh, with the most biggest stories in sports, Go beyond the scoreboard and beyond behind the scenes with the local experts insight that only Locked On can provide. Locked On Sports Today, available on this app, YouTube, and whenever you, wherever you get your podcast. All right, so let's go ahead and get back to our countdown. The final countdown. Yeah, Brett will be yelling at me for that, but let's go ahead and get back to this. Let me get my little ticker going again. Um, so... Number eight was Christian Javier becoming a, a part, a full-time starter again. And I actually removed this and I had the parade here, but I'm like, you know what? I think this guy had such a terrible regular season. And then all of a sudden he popped up in the playoffs and became this monster. So I think number seven has to be Yuli Gurriel's bat coming live in the playoffs. Like during the regular season, he just was not very good, and uh, I know that's why the Astros are not really – I mean, they want to bring him back, but they're not going to really go out there and kind of pay him a lot. In 545 at-bats this year, he had eight home runs, batted 242 with a 647 OPS. He had a negative 0.3 war in the regular season. But in the postseason, the old Yuli Gurriel uh, returned. In 49 at-bats, he had two – Home runs, 17 hits. He batted 347 with an OPS of 850. So this is a guy that in the 2021 season won the batting title. And then for some reason, I know a lot of us point, well, he stopped eating, so drinking sodas and eating pizza and he lost some weight. So maybe that was the reason why. But maybe he's just getting a little bit older and maybe just, I don't know. I don't know what happened. So maybe... The postseason will help him have a better 2023 season. But the Astros needed his bat because Alvarez was doing so good uh, in the first couple games of the um, Mariner series. Then he kind of dropped off a little bit. They needed the consistency of Bregman and Pena and then also Gurriel. Gurriel is one of the big reasons why the Astros won this World Series. And if the Astros uh, lost game seven and had to, sorry, game six and had to go to game seven, just imagine you wouldn't have had Bregman because he did hurt his finger in that game. And who knows um, if uh, Guriel would have been in that game either because he had that uh, knee sprain. So uh, Guriel meant a lot to that team. Uh, so he didn't play in game six. So he definitely wouldn't have played in game seven. So that was game, uh, that was number seven. So number six, Justin Verlander recovering from Tommy John surgery. I know you might say, well, he stinks in the playoffs and he's he had an 0-6 record in the World Series, yada, yada, yada. Who cares? This guy carried the Astros during the whole regular season. He won his third consecutive um, unanimous Cy Young, and I know you can't look at that when you're talking about the playoffs. The playoffs are a whole different animal. But in the playoffs, he uh, he did have a couple bad, bad games, especially game one versus the Phillies. And then the Mariners roughed him up a little bit. He didn't pitch great against uh, – I think he did actually pitch good against the Yankees. But overall in the postseason, he was 2-0 and with in 20 innings. He had a 5.85 ERA with 11.2 strikeouts in um, 20, those 20 innings pitch. 
But despite all his struggles in the playoffs, he did pitch the second most behind from Valdez in the playoffs uh, inning. So the Astros were not going to shy away from pitching their ace. He's Justin Berlander. You're paying him a lot of money to pitch. So he's still going to go. And during the regular season, he was 18 and four with 9.5 strikeouts per nine inning, a 1.75 ERA, which was one below, I think, Pedro Martinez's, uh, like uh, the record that he set um, a while back. And his whip overall was 0.83. And he just was the unanimous Cy Young Award winner for a reason. And he's the reason why him and Framer Valdez and Jose Arquiti and the whole pitching staff as a whole were the reason why the Astros won 106 games. So, yes, Justin Verlander was a big piece of 2022. So we need to be thankful for him, despite the bad games in the postseason. Now, Jordan Alvarez, yes, he came in third for MVP. He should have probably come in second. He did go through that little dry spell. But Alvarez, he had a great season. He batted, uh, he had 37 home runs, 97 RBIs. He had an OPS of 10 to 19 in the regular season. He had 144 hits on the season, 95 runs. He probably could have done a lot better, but he just went through this extended slump where it seemed like nothing could go right for him. But then he picked it up right before the playoffs. And in the postseason, yes, he probably could have done better, but he seemed to get the hits in the right time. He batted 192 in the postseason. As hard as it seems, he batted 192 in postseason with a 735 OPS with three home runs. But those home runs were big. And game one of the ALDS, that was that walk off in what, the 18th inning? Uh, so that, or the extra inning game, whatever it was, that was crazy. Then you had game two. Uh, he had the game winning uh, home run in that game as well. And then the, the third home run was the game winning home run in game six of the World Series. So, yes, there was a whole big gap between the time where he, um, uh, he hit that home run, but still, it was amazing to see him just dominate, just, find the right spots to hit those home runs. And uh, he wasn't going to win MVP of the series. That was Jeremy Pena. But uh, his home runs meant so much for the Astros in the playoff run. And I just wish he would have done a little bit more. But his season was part of the reasons why the Astros got to where they did. Number four, this is a guy that a lot of people kind of gave up on early in his career, but Mike Trout said, no, this guy has one of the best curveballs in baseball. And this is uh, basically why Oz Ocampo uh, said, no, we got to sign this guy. And it's from Rivaldez. From Rivaldez r- rose to A status this year. So I know a lot of people are going to say, no, we want Lance McCullers as the ace if Justin Verlander leaves. No, just. Uh, Framer Valdez is your ace. He is your ace um, for next year. In the postseason, he pitched 25 innings. He had 33 strikeouts. He had a 1.44 ERA, a 0.88 whip. He had three wins and four starts. So he pitched his butt off in the playoffs. And I I just think that during the regular season, you had the 25-game consecutive start streak. Uh, Then you had, um, he just, he actually got some votes for Cy Young Uh, during the regular season. I'm trying to get to it. He had 17 to six record and 201.1 innings pitched. He had a 2.82 ERA with a 1.16 whip. He had a 90, 194 strikeouts. So just think about it. That quality start streak was about 85% of the season of his starts. So that just shows that how dominant, how rare it is for a pitcher to do what Framer Valdez did this year. And if he did not do that, who knows what the Astros would have done this year. So if Framer Valdez did not rise to a status this year, who knows how many wins the Astros would have got. Now, number three is Dusty Baker guiding the Astros as manager to the world series. And this is something that I think a lot of people 
we're rooting for, especially outside of Houston. There are a lot of people that said, we hate the Astros. We don't like what they did, but we do respect Dusty Baker and, uh, and his career. And we know how close he's gotten to win the world series in the past. And we, we love the guy, the Astros players. They love the guy. And so number three is Dusty Baker winning the world series. And this meant a lot for him. I mean, he's probably was already a lock for Cooperstown, but by him winning a world series as a manager, he already did as a player, but this is first one as a manager. This is a, this is a win for him. This is a way to say, Hey, I I'm a win. I'm a world series winner. I can go home. I, I could technically retire tomorrow and say, I achieved my goal, but that's not what he's doing. What he's doing is he said, I always said, if I, if I win one, I'm going to win another. And so that's why he's coming back for 2023. He wants, he thinks his team is still good enough. Even if Justin Verlander leaves, he thinks that this team is still good enough for another world series run. And uh, who knows if they win another one, he might say, well, I always said, if I win another uh, one, I'll win another, then I'll win another. Maybe that he'll come back for 2024. Who knows what's going to happen, but Dusty Baker with everything he's been through with his career, this is just a great moment for him. And that's why I know Astros fans have been critical of his decisions in the past. I have, Brett has, everybody has, but when it came to it, I think that he outmanaged the other managers and uh, he knew how to use the bullpen. I know we still question uh, how many times he used Ryan Stanek and uh, all that. But I think that he had a plan and he stuck with that plan. That plan led to a World Series win. And the next one, number two, is uh, the Astros could not have won this World Series. They could not have won the ALCS without this guy, Jeremy Pena. All this talk um, during the offseason with um, Carlos Correa, is he going to come back? Is he going to resign? Who's going to play shortstop if, if Carlos Correa doesn't come back? And everybody's like, well, you have this this guy that's never played um, above AAA. His name's Jeremy Pena. And are, um, are the Astros going to give him a chance? Are they going to sign a veteran guy as a backup? Is that what Nico Goodrum's role was supposed to be as a backup, just in case Jeremy Pena didn't succeed? But he succeeded. There was parts of the year where he was in talks for the rookie year. I know he finished, uh, I think he finished fifth overall in the rookie year or something like that. But I, overall, if you look at what he did in the postseason, he was the MVP of the ALCS. He was the MVP of the World Series. We're talking about a young kid who I believe he's 25 years old and his first season, his first playoff run, he was the MVP of two series. That doesn't happen, folks. That, that is a very rare occasion. So during the postseason run, so uh, number two is Jeremy Pena becoming a star in the playoffs. Yeah, his, his season was up and down. I think his OPS plus during a regular season was 101. So he was just above a average player during regular season. I think he was good at times. He kind of went through a little slump, but during the playoffs in 58 at bats, he batted 345 with OPS of uh, 1005 with four home runs, eight RBIs, and yes, he did strike out 15 times, but uh, he had five doubles. 20 hits. He scored 12 runs. Jeremy Pena was responsible for Alvarez's home run in game one. Every rally Jeremy Pena was responsible for, it seemed like. And Jeremy Pena was a big part of the Astros offense throughout the whole playoffs. He had that walk-off home run in the 18 inning game. So yeah, Jeremy Pena, welcome to the club and thank you for joining the Astros and we are very thankful for you. And that's why he is number two on this list. So now going on to this one, I'm sure we're, we can all agree with this one. Uh, there's been a lot of talk over the past, what, uh, four, five years. I don't, I don't know. I'm losing count. It's getting really annoying at this point. Well, you won the last world series because of trash cans. 
that's very trashy, blah, blah, blah. And, um, but the Astros got their second world series title and there's no hint of, well, outside of the front office, but, uh, there's no hint of any type of scandal or anything like that. The Astros did it the right way and they won their world series and people can say, okay, well, this team has been to the world series, uh, world series four out of, uh, was it five out of the last six years or whatever it was, or four out of the last six years. And uh, this team is just a good team overall. So yeah, we won a world series again. How many of y'all thought that would happen in your lifetime? I mean, winning world series is hard. It took a long time for the Astros to even get to this point, but they did, they took care of business. And so uh, it's just so good that we were able, uh, fans were able to participate in another parade you're, the Astros now have two World Series trophies, and then you also have all the extra bonus money. We'll talk about that in, in the next podcast. But, <clears throat> guys, that's all I got. Um, I hope you had a great Thanksgiving, and be thankful for your friends and family and for the best team in baseball, and we'll see you next time.